Okay, today we're going to demonstrate how to make fire using the pump drill. The pump drill is a pretty clever device. It goes back at least uh, to the time of the Phoenicians, possibly earlier. It was also used in Rome and uh, in India. It seems like wherever it was introduced, it spread pretty fast, including in the Americas. So the way this works is you have a spindle with a counterweight on the bottom. The counterweight keeps some momentum going to keep this thing rewinding itself. What happens is the spindle is rotate it like that. That causes the uh, rope to wind around the spindle. Now when you push down on this, it's pulling on each one of these ropes on either side of the spindle and that causes the spindle to rotate. So, as you push down, you get the rotation and it rewinds the string as you can see right there. And that's basically it. It's a simple machine, but uh, the guy who invented this was pretty clever, really. This can be used for fire making. It can be used for drilling holes in uh, all sorts of materials by putting a stone bit on the end of this thing. It's even used today uh, by some jewelers, especially in other countries and stuff, where you don't really need power in order to, uh, to drill things. Okay, we're ready to make some fire with a pump drill. We've got our uh, fire board all ready to go using sodal. We've got a hole burned in a little bit there. We've got the notch cut. Take our spindle, put it down into the hole. First thing, you want to make sure that your handle's level. If it's cocked to one side or the other, when you're operating the drill, it'll rub it on the hole in the handle here, and that'll uh, create extra friction. Next thing you want to do is make sure that your spindle is centered in that hole. That's important, and it usually will be if you get this level. Okay, then you want to wind your spindle. You can do it like this, or you can just take the handle, which is what I usually do, and spin it like that. You want to make sure it's fully wound all the way to the top like that when you start out so you get a good rotational speed going down on your first pump to keep it going. And we're ready to go here. You want to make sure you don't get too sloppy on your upstroke so that your string winds properly. Picking up some drag now. Pretty sure we're getting close to an ember. Okay, I think we got it now. Yeah, I'll get a nice ember there. No hurry now. I'm using a uh, juniper bark, bark bird's nest, and I've got a little bit of a uh, cattail down in there. We'll drop the ember down in there. I can get it to release here. Sticking to the, uh, sticking to this piece of bark here. All right, we've got it in there. Now we'll just blow this thing into flame here. So I disassembled a hand pump, just four components, you've got a handle, you've got a rope, you've got a counterweight, and a spindle. I'm using sandstone here for my counterweight or my uh, flywheel. A lot of people use wood, that's fine. I prefer the uh, stone because it's heavier and it keeps your drill spinning a lot better. You drill a hole in the middle of it, uh, you want to make sure the hole is just a little bit larger than the uh, upper end of your spindle. The upper end of your spindle fits in like this, and then it's a press fit. You need a pretty good tight press fit, otherwise your stone or your flywheel can spin around on the shaft. It's important to have your counterweight down toward the bottom of your uh, spindle. That puts a lot more stability in the system. For the handle, I'm using a piece of uh, bamboo. You can use any type of wood you want. The bamboo is nice and light, 
fits the handle really comfortably. Essentially, you just drill a hole right smack in the middle of it, make sure it's larger than the diameter of your spindle so that it'll fit in there like that. Next thing is, you put your handle over your spindle. You got your rope tied on to one end of the handle. You got a little hole over here in the very top of your spindle. It just goes through there. You can also just put a notch in there if you want or a groove. It doesn't really matter. I prefer a hole because it doesn't come out very easily. You just put your rope through the other end of your handle here. And then in order to uh, adjust the amount of slack, you lift that up. You want to make sure your hands have plenty of clearance here at the bottom of the stroke. So about like that. You can tie a knot in the bottom, however you want to secure it, it doesn't really matter. And once it's secure, basically that's it. You're ready to go. Just wind it up and start pumping. Now it's important when you're operating this that you keep a good steady stroke like that. And you want to not be sloppy on the upstroke because if you are, I'll demonstrate here, you can see how it winds itself incorrectly and uh, then it's going to kind of pop on the way down. So you don't want that. The other thing is to make sure that your handle is fairly wide. You don't want a very short, narrow handle. You need that, uh, that width there in order to uh, create those pulling forces on the shaft. If it's too narrow, you won't get as much, and it's just not going to operate very efficiently. So what you want here is basically an equilateral triangle. Uh, mine's probably a little bit short here. I should probably have a little bit wider. This is about right. It's pretty close to right. One final comment about the uh, pump drill. It's a pretty efficient machine. It doesn't require much physical effort. So if you've got kids or your wife or somebody and you want them to actually experience what it's like to make fire, I recommend the pump drill. It's definitely the easiest way there is to make fire. It's a lot easier than the uh, even the bow drill, which is probably the next easiest way. One of the things you can do if you've got uh, small children and you're trying to have them operate this, you can put a smaller flywheel on here. That makes it a little bit easier to push down on and keep it going. You can make fire with this as well. I've done it. This weighs about a half a pound. Um, this one here weighs about a pound and a half, just to give you some idea of what we're dealing with here. Now you want to size your pump drill according to its intended use. If you're going to be using this uh, like a jeweler wood or something for tiny little objects, you could have a really, really tiny little pump drill. If you're going to be uh, drilling uh, large holes in, uh, in wood or bone or whatever, you might want one a little bit larger than this. For fire making, uh, this is working really good for me. You don't really need to go any bigger than this. So I'm going to do another video here in the near future, and I'm going to show how to make one of these things. And uh, we'll put some stone tips on the end of it, and we'll test it out, see how it drills through wood and some other materials. So give the pump drill a try. It's a lot of fun. And let me know how it works for you. If you have any questions, just put a comment down at the bottom of the video. Thanks for watching.